Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great uh, Memorial Day. Um, kind of taking it easy here, um, doing some different stuff. I've started doing keto again, um, and so I'm starting to do what I'm trying to do on keto. And if you want to follow along and you know laugh at me if it doesn't work or uh, try some of the recipes and things like that, definitely check out my other channel, Cooking and Tailgating with uh, Joe Boo, because that's where I'm posting um, kind of um, my logs of what I'm eating and some different recipes and stuff uh, that I'm doing on there. There's a lot of different misconceptions and different ways of doing keto. And so I'm going to give you how I'm doing it for me. And so far, um, I've been doing it for a couple of days and I already don't feel quite as bloated. In fact, my stomach does not feel so tight against my rib cage. But I have a long ways to go because I was like 275 when I got back from Vermont and that's just way way too much unless the Dallas Cowboys want to call me up and say Mark we want you to be a nose tackle and since I haven't heard from Jerry I'm, I'm assuming that that's not going to happen so anyway in the meantime um what we get from the talking heads and things um are doom and gloom the biggest thing I, I heard when I was watching um uh, NFL, uh, uh, NFL something from ESPN. They were talking about the Cowboys. They got CD Lamb, and after CD Lamb, they've got nothing else. And we've heard so many times where people have been saying Cowboys may cut Brandon Cooks to save some cap money, or uh, may try and trade him, of course, to save some cap money and things like that. Um, and so people have kind of poo-pooed the whole idea. You know, throughout the season, you heard the narrative that, you know, Brandon Cooks has been a thousand yard receiver for everywhere he goes. But with the Cowboys, no, not so much. And if you look at the numbers of what he had from last year, let me pop them up on here. You could say, well, maybe, you know, because he did come in the league in 2014, that maybe he is declining that, you know, the last three years, excuse me, four years, you know, where 2020, he was 1,150-yard receiver. The next year in Houston, he was 1,037. The next year, he was 699. And then with the Cowboys and that garbage quarterback that they have, he was only 657. So you could look and make the argument and say, maybe he just doesn't have it. Now, his yard average for last year was 12.2. Not outstanding or, or you know or anything like that but you know a little above average but here's the thing i want you to actually understand here a couple of things one brandon cooks was new to the cowboys last year okay and the cowboys were new to mike mccarthy's texas coast offense we saw how the offense didn't really seem to get into gear until after the bye week when everybody was like, maybe this is the end of Dak Prescott, this is the end of Mike McCarthy, where's Kellen Moore? But here's the thing. If I dig through the numbers and we actually go through, um, I went through StatMuse. StatMuse is a great uh, reference here because I went through the game logs. What's interesting with Brandon Cooks was the first seven games of the season, he played in 16 games. Um, his numbers were not very good at all. Through the first seven games per average, he averaged 2.4 catches per game and 9.3 yards per catch per game. And only 23 yards a game. You looked at that and said, man, that's, that's really, really bad. But part of that was typical of the Cowboys' offense in general, that they hadn't gotten into a groove because he had his breakout game against the New York Giants where he had nine receptions on 10, on 10 catches, okay, for 173 yards, a 19.2-yard average. And going into that point, here's what was amazing. Those first seven games, he had one game above 10 yards per reception. And that was the game against the Rams where he was 16.3. But you look at, I'm sorry, two. 
uh, the original Giant game. He was 11. But you look at most of those games, 8.5 against the Cardinals, 6.8 against New England, 7 against San Francisco, 9 against the Chargers, 7 against the Eagles. But all of a sudden, the second half of the season, he blew up because he went from 23.57 yards per game um, average to 54, from 2.4 yards per reception to 4 to 9.3 yards on average to 13 and 5. If you were to equate what he did those last nine games of the season to a full season, you're looking at him having over 900 yards. Now, keep in mind, he still had eight TD passes, and he is a very dynamic player. So it's feasible that being more comfortable this year in this offense, okay? And the Cowboys hopefully not starting off where the first five or six games is a learning process. Being able to take off where he left off this year, it is conceivable to see him get back to that 1,000 yards of receptions and possibly 10 TDs. Now, people are going to say I'm crazy. Well, maybe I am crazy. But... <clears throat> with C.D. Lamb being as dynamic as he was the second half of the season, and we can equate, if we literally did the same thing with um, C.D. Lamb's numbers where the offense was terrible those first five games and take that second half, he would have been over a 2,000-yard receiving season if you could have equated that for a whole season. Now, again, these are hypotheticals. You're always going to have good games and bad games. But we do know that being familiar and comfortable in a offense, having the second year in a row, you have you don't have the learning curve. And for people to kind of poo-poo the effect of Brandon Cooks and just forget about him, I'm, I'm hoping they do. I'm hoping they do because if we get a Jalen Tolbert or Jalen Brooks that pick it up a little bit better as the number three and you get – Brandon Cooks in the slot, who is a smaller receiver, who is faster, he's going to be able to do some damage because CeeDee Lamb is going to get the lion's share of the attention. And added to this mix, you also have a budding star in Jake Ferguson. And see, this is where all of these pieces, the sum is greater than the parts. You follow what I mean? Sometimes you can have really great, great, great players, but then you have some spots which are really, really bad. And when you put it all together, what happens is you got some places that are just awful. This is where if Brandon Cooks can play like he did the second half of the season, as well as C.D. Lamb, as well as Jake Ferguson taking a step, and if your number three wide receiver, which... A lot of times we had Michael Gallup, who just, let's be clear here, left you wanting a lot more. He just was not good. He just was not good. I don't know what happened to Michael Gallup. Um, I was sitting here watching um, somebody on Twitter was going through, and they were defending Dak, and they were talking about how porous our defense played in a lot of these playoff games where you, it was, God, Watching this Ram game where we had the opportunity, had the defense stop Jared Goff from running 10 yards on third down and giving the Cowboys the ball again, you know we would have won this game because of the way the offense was clicking and rolling the second half. And looking at San Francisco game where Debo Samuels is just running rough shot over him and we just can't stop. Oh, it's just like, yes, Dak has not been perfect. But damn, bro, we got to do some other things in some other places, too, to get some different results. Be that as it may, if the Cowboys with a young offensive line, because people are looking solely at this as a young offensive line that's going to be terrible for the Cowboys, looking at some of these game highlights and stuff and seeing some of the plays that Dak Prescott has made, you realize that the Cowboys offensive line has not been as good as everybody thinks it has. 
and you see Dak Prescott running for his life and making plays while he's under distress. And I will go back to, and let, let me see actually, um, let me pull this up. Let me see if I can pull. Okay. This is one of those examples here and probably end up getting demonetized because of playing this. But this is one of those ones that you have to look at and say, your quarterback, look at it. Your quarterback should have been sacked. But yet, he on the move finds a wide open CD Lamb. Now, people will go through and say, C.D. Lamb, incredible season. C.D. Lamb's a beast. But if the quarterback doesn't get that ball to him like that, bro, look at this. Look at this. You're telling me, you know, because people say, well, Dak Prescott had great pass protection. Look at this. Everybody, it was a meeting at the quarterback. How the hell he gets out of there, Okay. How the hell he gets out of there and keeps his eyes down the field and launches the ball 47 yards. That's a garbage-ass quarterback? No. So, my point being is, is here, Brandon Cooks is one of the key players that's going to help. And because CeeDee Lamb is going to get focus, people are going to try and stop CeeDee Lamb. And now... Brandon Cooks has to be able to take up some of that load. And this is the whole thing that I talk about when I say, you know, free Micah. Is Micah Parsons is great, but if you don't have somebody else to help take up some of the attention, you could shut down one guy. And so Brandon Cooks, keep sleeping on him. Keep sleeping on him. I'm telling you, he is going to have a monster season. 1,000 yards, 10 TDs. Is not out of the realm. All right, y'all. I'm going to see y'all a little bit later. I'm going to go do a little bit of work here because that's what we do here on Memorial Day. The sun's out. And I think I'm going to be doing yesterday. Oh, my God. We did a uh, steak, uh, steak bowl for dinner. Oh, my God. It was so good. Even though I felt like a tornado was coming through while I was cooking it. Tonight, we're doing a grilled shrimp bowl. That's going to be good. All right. I'll see you soon. Peace.